Yo, 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 welcome to Hard Pass. I am your host, Jacques Slade. We are back. It's the show that loves the new thing on the internet of turning comments into songs. No more contact in Yeah, I have a few saved text threads that I could turn into an 808s and Heartbreak sequel. All right, let's start with some hot takes. So over the break, we had a lot of things to think about. Presents for family and friends, staying safe amidst the pandemic that's getting worse by the day, elections that could determine the future of our democracy, and the fact that people chose off-white ones over OG ones on sneakers app. And no, I'm not gonna tell you what was at the top of my mind out of all of those, but leading the show with this is kind of a tell. I just couldn't comprehend it. And it had a lot of 2016 energy to it. And that's not even the only time sneakers app voting has failed me this past few weeks. (sighs) More on that later. So the New York Knicks, they're above 500 in January. So you know what that means. All of your friends from New York are gonna be flooding your feed with highlights of Julius Randle and calling RJ Barrett the future of the NBA, yada, yada, yada. I mean, that's just annoying. Like, can you believe fans can be that insufferable just because their team is winning? I mean, have humility here, guys. It's not a good look. You're better than that. Michael Jordan's nearly decade-long legal battle with Chinese brand Xiaodan is over after they were ordered to pay MJ $46,000 for using the word that has been closely associated with MJ in China for a long time. 46 k that's it? That doesn't sound like MJ took it that personally. That's like one hand of poker for him. I feel like he used to bet Scottie Pippen more than that just to see whose bags got out of the plane first. There's got to be more to this story, like MJ acts for a piece of the company or they're gonna make a statue of him laughing at Isaiah Thomas while holding that iPad or something. So 2021 is off to a flaming dumpster fire of a start, which we'll get to that later. So we thought we'd put on our little hopeful thinking caps for a second and make some predictions for the upcoming year that we will definitely not run back at the end of the year to see how wrong we got it. Number 10, Kanye will elevate the Yeezy to even newer heights. Why? Because Kanye will get some sense knocked back into him and we'll get some of that old Kanye back. He will drop an album that will be well received by critics and fans and we will get an Adidas Yeezy that will blow everybody's mind in a good way. Not that alien looking 451. Number nine, New Balance is going to have a huge year. No, they're not going to have a Yeezy-like moment, but I do think that New Balance will have a Puma-like jump in 2021. They won't just be for the real sneakerheads who scoop up 992s and call them the sneaker of the year for cool points. I mean, they will be on the feet of your average hype beast, your cousin who only has NMDs and Air Max 270s, and your friends who still wear basketball shoes off the court. Number eight, Space Jam, A New Legacy will be a better movie than the original, but it won't be well received by the public because A, fewer people will watch it because of the pandemic, and B, Jordan fans will never let that movie be great. It could be Pixar levels of good and it won't matter. It'll just be a cult classic for the kids who will then grow up and be insufferable themselves when Space Jam, A New New Legacy starring the Ball Brothers drops in 2031. Number seven, Tiger Woods will wear an Air Jordan retro golf shoe. I've been begging for this to happen for years and I get it. Tiger is a guy who's set in his ways and I doubt we're gonna see him wear like bread 11 golf shoes on a Sunday in Augusta. But maybe during a Thursday or a Friday, he could rock some J's in honor of his longtime buddy and Nike brethren. Come on, Tiger, just so some level of swag. Number six, pandemic P gonna pandemic P. Look. I hope Paul George can repair his reputation as a playoff performer. I mean, in his early days in Indiana, he was taking it to a prime LeBron in Miami. Sure, his Pacer team couldn't actually beat Miami, but they made it interesting. So playoff P does have the fight in him. And honestly, I really think it's not just his reputation on the court that's on the line this season. We already talked about this before, but Nike might be looking towards the future with somebody like John Morant as a signature athlete if this goes on. Number five, you can buy a PlayStation 5 or an Xbox Series X in a store sooner than you think. Yes, many of us are still suffering from sneakers-like trauma whenever Best Buy our Target says that they have units available and then they sell out in seconds. But I doubt this is a situation like the Nintendo Wii was over a decade ago when it took almost two years for them to correct their supply chain. By this summertime at the latest, you will be able to buy either next-gen console. Why? Because Nintendo is going to announce their upgrade to the Switch and that will replace the PS5 and Xbox as the new hype console to profit from. What? I didn't say it was gonna be all good news. Sorry guys. Four, the dominance of dunks will continue. I hate to say it, but with so many dunks dropping this month and the arrival of the silhouette to Nike by you after a very long absence, we are going to have dunks on our mind for a very long time. And honestly, it's not something that bothers me in the least bit. 
I am sad that Nike doesn't just make some colorways readily available like Jordan Mids or why they can't keep up with the demand on Nike by you, but I think the Dunk and the SB counterpart are just too appealing to the casual audience to ever fall out of favor again. I just wish we had the same love for silhouettes that I think that are just as iconic, like Nike's own Air Force One or Puma Clyde or Adidas Superstar. We can strive to like more things, people. Number three, Curry Brand will not have Under Armour branding ASAP. Why? No reason. But in all seriousness, in order to truly create a brand that is independent from its progenitor, Steph can no longer afford to have the UA still be on his gear. The Curry 8 flow almost had it, but the UA logo could still be found on the heel. I mean, Jordan brand separated themselves from the Nike swoosh for a long time, except on Jordan 1 retros. In time, it'll all come back around and kids who grew up wearing Steph's shoes will be nostalgic for those earlier models. But right now, that UA is the step down for the meantime. Number two, virtual sneaker unboxing with Obama. I did not forget my hopes for the new year and I hope you didn't either. We can build this and make it happen, people. Just imagine the comedy of yours truly unboxing some Jays or New Balance Kawhis or whatever President Obama might be into at the moment. That would be awesome. And number one, Stacey Abram wins the Nobel Prize. Considering her amazing efforts to fight voter suppression and to make Georgia a state where the votes of all people of all sides count, Abrams, along with Latasha Brown and so many others, deserve recognition. And what better way to show you change the world than by being awarded such an honor? At the same time, I hope we all don't get too full of ourselves that when Stacey gets all the flowers, it just becomes performative. And now, sorry guys, a prepared statement from my co-writer. So baby, yeah, check this out. Look, as, as long as water is wet and the desert is dry, you ain't gonna find you another guy that's as good as I. <laughs> That's right. Hold on. Ooh, wait, hold on. Thank you, Stacey Abrams. Oh, I love you. I love you. I love you so much. Yes, even more than I love me. I know Jacques said you should get the Nobel Peace Prize, but not only that, you should replace Meghan McCain on The View, become the next Captain America in the MCU, be the first to drive a Tesla Cybertruck in a championship ring when the Lakers win for the AT time, if you know what I mean. By the way, I would have voted for her for a third time if I could. Back to Jacques. Yeah, baby. So I'm saying, you gonna get down with the get down and you gonna mess around with these clowns, if you know what I'm saying. Uh, are we gonna get sued for that? Is that sexual harassment? D does anybody know? Uh, welcome to the Heat Check, where we bring you everything that's dropping this week, and it's a lot. But considering we've already had a few delays to start the year when it comes to dunks, this could all be subject to change. First, we have the Nike Dunk Low UNLV. This is January 14th for $100. Paying homage to Larry Johnson, Stacey Ogman, and the rest of the early 90s running Rebels with this iconic color scheme of the dunks. Of course, good luck trying to get a pair of them. Nike Dunk Low, black white, January 14th for $100. You wanna know how dunk crazy we are at this moment? This might be the most in demand of the dunks dropping this week, and it's the most basic. It's black and white, like black and white. I, I, I don't know. Women's Nike Dunk High Football Gray, January 14th, $110. I'm not the only one that had to look up what football gray means, and when you do, you get nothing but pictures of these, right? Right? We have the Women's Nike Dunk Low Coast on the 14th for $100. The UCLA vibes on these are strong, but you know what else I sense that's strong with these? The resale vibes. The resale vibes are strong. We have the Adidas Ultra Boost 4.0 DNA Hearts. This is on the 15th for 180 bucks. It's the little things that make a relationship work. So maybe your significant other sneakerhead will appreciate the tiny hearts on the caging of these Ultra Boost. We have the Nike Kyrie 7 Roswell Ray Guns. These are on the 15th for 130. If anybody was going to take on the weird and wacky Roswell Ray Guns, it was gonna be Kyrie. We've seen the Roswell theme on Kyrie's before, but this is getting a wider release. So I'm looking forward to more kids learning about Dr. Funk and the gang. Adidas Yeezy Boost 700 V3 Safflower. This is on the 16th for 200 bucks. Safflower, according to Wikipedia, is a highly branched, herbaceous, thistle-like annual plant. It is commercially cultivated for vegetable oil extracted from the seeds and was used by the early Spanish colonies along the Rio Grande as a substitute for saffron. Then we have the Air Jordan 13 Starfish on the 16th for 190. Oh good, it has the Starfish nickname. I'm just glad we're not saying the name that we all know Hype Beast want to say. Shatter backboard 13s. And then my pick of the week is the Converse Pro Leather Roswell Ray Guns on January 15th for $85. Yeah, the Kyrie Ray Guns are cool, but this Pro Leather has that old school 70s ABA vibe with the stripes down the medial side. It's a perfect homage to a fictional team that we all wish was real. And now for 
a heat check on the Nike LeBron vote back going on right now on the sneakers app. Before the madness of January 6th, one of the trending topics on Twitter was this tournament to determine which iconic LeBron James player exclusive will actually release at a future date. It's a nice variety of PEs, some that LeBron has actually played in and others that we thought would just stay in the vault forever. So this is actually a fun thing that Nike is giving us the chance to do because some of these PEs that have leaked can go for thousands of dollars in the resale market. Now. I'm not one to judge what people want to pick as their preferred PE, but oh my goodness. I didn't know I was this out of touch with the people who use sneakers. It boggles my mind some of the choices that people are voting to win. Like, take a look at the battle between the LeBron 9 Gold King's Throne PE and the LeBron 6 Cartoon PE, AKA the Stewie Griffin. If I were to put together a list of the top 10 LeBrons ever made, including general releases and exclusives, I'm pretty sure the Stewie would be on that list. I mean, that shoe is actually on display in a museum. That's how special it is. And yet, as of this recording, it is losing and it is not even close. Like, how is that possible? Then there is the LeBron 3 Glow versus the LeBron 15 South Beach. Like, I get it. The Glow has some history behind it and it was one of the first times we caught a glimpse of a LeBron retro, but the South Beach 15 is a stunner visually. It's not South Beach LeBron 8 good, but it is pretty damn close. But maybe the one that has me the most heated is the battle between the LeBron 8 V2 January 8, 2011 and the Zoom Generation Purple. It's it's a purple Zoom generation. Laker fans should be demanding these just drop and not have to go through this voting process. The same thing goes for the LeBron 3 Los Angeles remix that is also currently losing to a Zoom generation rookie of the year PE. I have no idea what is going on with these votes. I mean, it's a little curious that every pair on the left side is currently winning, but still, how could 68% of 483,000 voters pick a LeBron 11 PE over the iconic Hardwood Classic 7s? It's just confusing to me. And unless there are some drastic changes in the next few hours, I don't see it changing up. And this next round is gonna be kind of miserable. I give the idea behind the vote back a perfect 10 out of 10 Dunkmans, but the choices that people are making, four LeBron death stares at JR out of nine LeBron death stares at Mario Chalmers. You never wanna go full Mario Chalmers. It's time for this week's Hard Pass, where we take a look at something in the culture that just needs to go. Like the phrase, get your maj on. I heard from so many Asian friends personally and on Twitter this week about this gentrified version of mahjong that I couldn't help but look. And before somebody says something, yes, there is an American version of mahjong that has its own set of house rules and traditions. George Costanza's mom was an avid mahjong player, so nobody is saying the game is exclusive to Asian people. But to replace the iconic tiles and colors with this amateur hour, charge 400 bucks and call the game Maj? Yikes. That's like going to Target and seeing those namaste and chill t-shirts levels of cringe. If my co-writer, the real one, was still alive, he'd be rolling over in his grave. Anyway, this week's hard pass goes to the phrase, this is not the America that I know. I heard that phrase so much this week that it made my head hurt. Uh, this is America and man, are we slipping. We've known it for so long and yet we still refuse to admit that this is who we are. What happened on the 6th was no doubt embarrassing and tragic. A group of white supremacist terrorists under the guise of patriotism and the urging of the president invaded the Capitol in an attempt to stop the certification of our election. And they did it with barely any resistance from the Capitol Police. Spend the most money in defense than any other country in the world, and yet we had them coming into one of our most sacred institutions like it's the opening day of Complex Con? Great. Thanks guys. Their gripe was that the election was being stolen from them. And yet there is no evidence of widespread voter fraud and virtually any attempt to contest the results of this election has been thrown out of court, sometime with incredulous laughter. Even the memeable attempts by members of the Senate and Congress to air their unfounded grievances about the results ended up being a gas can that fueled fames. Because no mistake about it, this was a terrorist act. Whether it was a well-organized attempt or the most dangerous troll job doesn't matter. They stormed their way in, looted, stole, and vandalized the Capitol. As of this recording, five people are dead, including a Capitol Police officer. For what? For selfies with the police? So you could take a letter from the Speaker of the House's office? So you could be pictured in the halls with Yeezys? What if they did see a lawmaker that they did not agree with? Even Republicans who were trying to do the right thing were in the crosshairs of these terrorists. The reality is this, they could have burned the whole thing down and the result of the election would not have changed. 
Whether you like it or not, Joe Biden will be sworn in as the president on January 20th and Kamala Harris will be the vice president. Now, whether Biden will be president 46 or 47 really depends on what happens in the next few days. But Joe Biden, president of the United States of America, is inevitable. Now it's up to him and us to get this thing to the America we claim to know. How we get there, I don't have the answers to. But there is one thing I do know for sure. Don't come in here trying to both sides this. You are not welcome. Do not equate this to the summer when Black Lives Matter protests were going on in the country and they were being harassed and oppressed and killed for the right to not be harassed and oppressed and killed. Do not compare the looting of a Target or a local business, which is obviously wrong and should not happen, to an invasion on the Capitol building. I don't even want to say, well, imagine if black people because it's a rhetorical question. We know what would have happened if it was black people, Mexicans, Asians, Muslims, any people of color would have even gotten within a mile of the Capitol if the roles were reversed. All those videos you saw on social media and on the cable news would have been a lot more censored and a lot more bloodier. The idea that we have to placate and give the ideas of racist and terrorist space to grow because we don't want to offend them or because they buy certain shoes or watch our shows has to end. I've said once and I'll say it again, miss me with that bull Believe me, I would love nothing more than to go back to a time where this show was nothing but jokes about Yeezys and we will try to do more of that in the coming weeks, but America is kind of making it hard on us. And just like in Georgia, look who has to go clean it up after they're done with their tantrum. Some of you kind of lost me trying to defend clowns who wore shirts that say 6MWE. And if you don't know what that means, it's six million wasn't enough. That's in reference to the six million that perished in the Holocaust. I hope I never see what kind of acronym they've got for us. All right, that's gonna do it for today's show. Thank you guys for watching Hard Pass. I am Jacques Slade. I'll see you next week, but not before I show you one of the last genuine pure things I saw on the internet. A father and a son streaming video games on Twitch across the country and getting Taco Bell delivered at the same time. Father. Oh wait, is this food here? Is this food here? That's amazing. Oh, look at this. <laughs> Hell yeah! <laughs> this is like one of the top five happiest days of my life. Bless you, Dan Reichert. You weird, amazing man. I'll see you next week. Peace.